This is the password game. At first, it doesn't seem like much. All you have to do is choose a password. But every time you complete a rule for your password, a new one appears. As you go further with each rule, you start to realize how insane these password requirements are until they start conflicting with each other and things quickly devolve into madness. Many players and streamers have tried to beat the password game, fighting whatever random crap it throws at you, going from requiring the most optimal chess move to literally setting your password on fire. Stop! What? No! <laughs> what? What happened to Paul? This game is so hard that as of making this video, Neil, the creator of the game, hasn't even beaten it himself. However, me and my friends managed to beat all 35 rules in the password game, and today, I'm going to show you how it's possible, and how we completed the entire thing. Password. We're starting with Weezer. No, horrible start already. Weezer... Make it... Make no. it Weezer? No, 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 no. The first four rules of the password game are what you'd expect when creating a password for anything online. At least five characters, a number, an uppercase letter, and a special character. Rule 5 is when things start to become weird. All digits in your password must add up to 25. For now, this can easily be solved by typing 5 fives, but let me just tell you that this rule becomes incredibly annoying later down the line. Rule 6 has you include a month of the year, so we pick May because it's the shortest. Same thing with Rule 7 and 8, which make us add a capital V for the required Roman numeral, and Pepsi because apparently Pepsi is now sponsoring passwords. Rule 9 requires that all Roman numerals multiply to 35, but because we're too lazy to do math, we just type XXXV because that's literally just the Roman numeral for 35. Rule 10 introduces a CAPTCHA, but thankfully none of us are robots, so we're able to type it in. But this is the first rule that starts to show how other rules could conflict with each other because the CAPTCHA includes numbers that go against Rule 5. This means we have to adjust the numbers to add up to 25 every time there's a rule that adds numbers. The next rule is definitely unexpected, including the answer to today's Wordle. That's simple enough, all we had to do was solve the daily Wordle. I managed to get it on my third try, which is pretty good I think. After adding a two-letter symbol from the periodic table and an emoji of the current phase of the moon, because why not, the game presents us with GeoGuessr. The password must include the name of the country shown in Google Street View, but unfortunately, I am garbage at GeoGuessr. After guessing a bunch of random countries and failing to spell Philippines five times, we managed to find the answer. Try Ghana. <laughs> what? Huh? We weren't... After Rule 15, if you aren't good at GeoGuessr, you better hope you're good at chess. Rule 16 presents a randomly generated chessboard, and not only does it make you find the most optimal move, it also requires you to type it in algebraic chess notation. I don't know what the hell that is. Luckily, the game links a Wikipedia article on how to write algebraic chess notation. We managed to determine that the best move was literally just moving the queen one space ahead to h3, but apparently, QH3 was in valid notation. You see, when writing algebraic chess notation, there are a bunch of rules you apparently need to consider before just typing the chess piece in grid coordinates. If the move takes out another piece, such as this pawn, you add an X after the first letter. And if you put the king in check, you add a plus at the end of the notation. After taking too much time figuring out that I had to add both of these, we managed to clear the rule. Next is Paul. He's a chicken egg that we have to take care of. Surely he won't become a problem later, right? After testing your geography and chess skills, the game then decides to throw chemistry at your face, and asks that you include elements in your password with atomic numbers that add up to 200. If there's one thing this game is good at, it's giving you a bunch of annoying work to do. Anyways, after bolding all the vowels in our password, because again, why not, our next rule starts burning our password. Are you serious? We end up losing about half our progress because the game literally burned it away. After spending even more time fixing it, we were presented with our next rule. Yay. Okay. okay. 
To cheer us up though, Rule22 had us type I am loved in the password, and after all of that happened, I probably needed that. But it doesn't matter anyway, because Paul has hatched, and oh my god I hate this stupid chicken. Every minute, we need to feed him three worms, or else he literally dies and you lose all your progress. If we overfeed him, he still dies, and so for the rest of the game, I have to spend half of my attention copy and pasting worm emojis for this dumb chicken. Thanks, Paul. The next rule randomly picks a length of a YouTube video and requires you to include it in your password. And honestly, at this point, I'm not even surprised by these rules anymore. The easiest way to find a video with the correct length is to search the exact duration on YouTube and hopefully get lucky enough to find one. But before we were able to pass the rule, I did something incredibly stupid. Copy the worm again. 8 minute 49, oh yeah. <laughs> oh no! There's no way to go <laughs> There's no way to go yes, back. He just, he just closed the password the tab. Yeah, I closed the tab for the password game. Obviously it was an accident, and I promise you I'm not throwing for content. We had to redo all of the same rules again. But lucky for you, I'm just going to skip to where we caught up. Just feel bad for me, okay? Anyways, back to rule 24. Just searching 5 minutes 31 seconds in YouTube helps us find a video, so we pick one with the exact duration and copy and paste it into the password. It's important to note that you need to be incredibly lucky and find a YouTube link that has very low numbers, no Roman numerals, and little to no atomic elements because the game becomes 10 times harder later down the line if you do. And if limiting your YouTube link wasn't enough, now we have to sacrifice two letters. This means we literally cannot use them in the password at all. We ended up choosing the letters J and Z because we didn't have them in our password and they're pretty uncommon to use. This next rule requires that the password must contain twice as many italic characters as bold but this is easily done by italicizing every vowel that's already bolded, as well as one extra character. But we're not done changing it yet, because now we have to turn 30% of the password into the Wingdings font. You know, the font that's made of a bunch of random symbols. At this point, our password is starting to look like something you'd see from an analog horror video. Now, before I talk about Rule 28 and how awful it is, Remember how earlier I went on a rant about Paul, this dumb little chicken? Well, at this point in the run, I forgot to feed Paul. That's a good <laughs> Paul, Paul's dead. <laughs> the problem with Paul is that I constantly have to feed him every few seconds just so I don't risk losing all of my progress. It's incredibly easy to focus on the current rule while also forgetting about him. In fact, he's so annoying that on my attempt right after, I lost to him again. For the rest of our playthrough, I've given my friend Zack the very special job of Paul duty, which is just reminding me to feed him a worm every 10 seconds. Worm, 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 worm. Yeah, he, yeah. He need, he's hungry, he's so That's hungry. He's smashed in and he need worm. <laughs> Two hours have been spent on us trying to beat the password game so far, so as you can imagine, we've been going insane trying to feed Paul 24-7 while also dealing with the other rules. It's time for the color. <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, Captain, we need your help. Captain. Oh, worm. No, 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 we need your Shut up. Colors. Oh, no. Anyway, it's time for colors. Our password must include the color shown on Rule 28 in hex, which is a six-digit code that represents the RGB values of a color. Rule 28 is probably the most time-consuming rule we have to deal with, but I'll explain why later. For now, to find the hexadecimal code, I managed to screenshot the color, pull it up in Microsoft Paint, and use the built-in RGB system to find the hex. With that out of the way, Rule 29 is actually pretty easy. We literally just have to change the font of our Roman numerals to Times New Roman. But then Rule 30 shows up and reminds you how tedious this game is. Well, as if the previous 29 rules didn't already. With Rule 30, the font size of every number in our password must be equal to its square. This sounds kind of confusing at first, and it is, but essentially, every number in our password has to have its font size changed to the number that it is, squared. 
For example, the number 3 needs to have its font size changed to 9 pixels because 9 is the square of 3. Now the problem with this rule is that the small numbers in our password become ridiculously small. And have you ever wondered what a 0 pixel font size looks like? It literally doesn't exist. And to top it all off, the next rule makes us change the font size for every repeating letter. After we're finished with both of these rules, our password, um, looks a bit funky to say the least. But everything starts to fall apart now because these next two rules are so cruel that they made us rethink everything. Rule 32, our password must include the length of our password, and Rule 33, the length of our password must be a prime number. Because of these two, we must have our password length either be 101, 103, or 107 because they're prime numbers, and we need to include one of those numbers in the password. But because we have to add these numbers, conflicts start happening with other rules. Remember Rule 5 from the very beginning of the game, where all of our digits had to add up to 25? Well, now it's come back to haunt us. Because we already have the numbers from our leap year, algebraic chess notation, and most importantly our YouTube link, we need to change our color to a hexadecimal code that has no numbers. That way, we can have enough digits for including the length of our password. This is where we spend almost half an hour going back to Rule 28 just to find a color that's almost identical to white, because pure white's hexadecimal code is entirely just letters. After testing multiple colors over and over, we just need pure white. Please. <gasps> oh, holy sh In a stroke of luck, we finally got the shade of white we were looking for. This is a huge breakthrough for us. Because of this hex code, we are able to add the prime number 103, make our password length exactly 103 characters long, and do all of it without breaking rule 5. Now we move on to rule 34, and oh, it looks like there isn't a rule 34 actually. I wonder why. However, this means we have reached the final rule of the entire password game, and everything, all our hours of work, all our worms fed to Paul, comes down to this single rule. Your password must include the current time. The stakes are the highest they've ever been, the tension in the voice call is tight, and our lives might be on the line here. It's past midnight, and now the game wants us to include our time in the password? That's insane! If we add the current time, not only does Rule 5 become broken, but the length of our password isn't a prime number anymore. It's practically over. But wait, there's hope. My friend Zack started brainstorming how we could beat this rule and the entire game. He realized it was almost about to go past 1am, and noticed that we had an extra number 3 in our password. If we were to get rid of it and include the time 102 in the password, we could have enough numbers to add up to 25. However, we must keep our password length at 103 characters for the prime number, so in order to have room for the time, we managed to find 3 unnecessary characters in our password and deleted them. The last step, in order to make everything work, was to have Paul eat a worm. Yes, seriously. If Paul eats a worm and leaves 2 left, that means we end with 103 characters exactly. Then we can pass rule 5, Rule 32, Rule 33, and most importantly, the final rule. All we have to do is wait until the time turns to 1.02am and hope that everything works. After nearly three hours of trying to beat the password game, dealing with the insane rules, and having to restart multiple times, this was the final stretch. Once the time hit 1.02am, a box appeared, asking if this was our final password. When we clicked yes, a second text box appeared below our final password, requiring that we retype it to confirm everything. Was this actually the end of it all? Would we be able to finally beat the password game? Well, I'll let you see for yourself.
I imagine he removed it. Maybe you can watch us on the stream as from one day. Oh, holy! <laughs> we did it! Oh, I want to cry. We did it. <laughs> oh my god. And here's when you say, and just like that. <laughs> and just like that. <laughs> and just like that, we beat the password game. Thanks for watching.